Hey y'all, welcome to a thrifty homestead. My name's Ashley if you're new to the channel and I'm married to a wonderful guy named Adam and we have four beautiful kids. And we are on our journey of homesteading. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how I meal plan and make a monthly shopping grocery haul. Um, I have learned since March that this is the way that seems the most efficient at saving money for us. I used to do weekly grocery trips and I always overspent. Going, going into the stores, I would always be picking up random purchases, thinking I was getting a good deal and would always go over budget. But since we have started doing a monthly grocery pickup, I have saved us about $150 a month so i have been able to get our grocery budget for our family of six down to only 450 dollars a month and that is including me building up our stockpile so i've had a lot of people ask me how do i meal plan and make a grocery list for an entire month for our family and that is what i'm going to talk to you guys about today and hopefully it will help you if you are struggling with learning to do a once a month grocery type shopping trip or if you're struggling with meal planning in general. So what I do is I'll sit down, like I sit down today and I pull up notepad on my computer. You can get a notebook, whatever you would like, and you just start, I do one, two, three, four for the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Like here is my meal plan. You can kind of see, I just, go down through there jotting down ideas of what my family likes to eat and I kind of before I sit down if you don't know I suggest or would recommend go to your pantries go and see what you've got in them go to your freezer like I I know in our freezer we have a ton of beef and a lot of pork <clears throat> we have a little bit of chicken left so I basically know I'm going to be meal planning around those three types of meat and then I also know that I'm always going to throw in a couple of pizza nights and things like that. So I will sit down and I'll just jot down quick meals <clears throat> that I can think off the top of my head and kind of rotate them through the dates. And I would only put down things your family's going to eat. Like my kids, some of them are pretty picky. So I always, if I make it a new meal, I always include like a side that I know they're going to eat. But once you get it kind of filled in, um, and you've got some couple of empty spaces, that's when I like to try new meals, new meal ideas. Um, but I still kind of base it around the meats that I have in the freezer. So like a new meal for us this month is going to be, let me see what I've got down, apricot glazed pork roast. And I found that recipe in one of my slow cooker cookbooks that I have. And what I'll do is, I'll put that down in one of the blanks that I didn't have an idea of what to make. And also on my list so that I, cause I'm really bad at forgetting, I'll put like, if you can see Pinterest, like I know that's on my Pinterest, I'll save on my Pinterest like September menu. And then I put like a cookbook, which cookbook it's in that I've got here at home so I can go pull it up. And another good thing that you can do that I started doing that I haven't completed yet because I'm still learning rotational meals of what my family likes is you can get you a binder and print out all those meals and put them in your binder and then you have it right there. You're not constantly on Pinterest or on, you know, digging through your cookbooks and it's all right there for you and you're ready to go. But anyway, once, once you get your meal plan down and you've gotten everything listed and make sure you're listing your sides as well. And also, you're not going to sit on this because we do a big freezer cooking at the beginning of each month for our breakfast foods. But you need to be thinking about your breakfast and lunch ideas also. And if you're um, not pretty, like we're pretty stocked up on daily meat and things like that. So that I'm, I'm not having to even think of that this month. But if, if you're not stocked on those things, go ahead and have like like a dinner side, a lunch side, and a breakfast. So that you can kind of meal plan and kind of know of everything you've got to get so you're not buying something that you don't need or your family will not eat. But once you get everything written down or typed out, however you're doing your meal planning, what I do, and it's just because I like to handwrite everything down, is I will sit down with my list, with my menu, I mean, and I will make a list. 
you can kind of see I've already marked through mine because I've been I've been uh, working on this today. But I'll more I'll write down. Okay, I know I need two heads of cabbage, some garlic, onions, tomatoes, all the things that I'm going to need to cook all the meals. And then I'm going to go back and look through my pantry again, and look through my stockpile and see what I have that I might not need. Like, I believe I had on here barbecue sauce. And I needed like three jars for the whole month. Or three, whatever you want to call it. And I just went and checked in my pantry because I knew I had some, but I didn't know how many. So I had two bottles left, and they're big bottles. So I'm only going to buy one jar of barbecue sauce so that I'm replenishing my stockpile that I'm using as well. But I, I'm not gonna end up buying the two that I had wrote down because I had enough in my stockpile or in my pantry. And that's that saved me money because I wasn't buying excess. And so basically that that's it. Um, I do use the Walmart app. So I go in, I sat down today and I went there and I price compared as well. Um, we're gonna, every month we do a Walmart pickup and all these trip if we're able to and a Sam's trip if we're able to. And September we are doing a trip. I've already picked up the Aldi's. Um, it was a few days early, but we were in the area and the Aldi's near us is 35 minutes away. So it's, it's not like a short trip there. Uh, I went ahead and got our bread and our milk because the milk alone, um, it, milk at our local Walmart is like $2.68 a gallon. And at that Aldi's, it's 98 cents. So when we're over there, I bought four gallons. And you can totally freeze milk. It, it, it is safe if you didn't know you could do that. You just, I would recommend pouring a little bit out of the top so that it has room to expand in your freezer. Okay, and also at Aldi's when you're there, pick up some bread. Unless you guys have a cheaper area to get your bread or you're able to have the time to make it homemade, which homemade is cheaper, but, and, and we do do homemade here, I just like the convenience of having store-bought bread sometimes because we are a family of six and one loaf, it takes one loaf every lunch, basically, to feed my family, especially the homemade loaves because they're smaller. Um, so I will buy like four or five loaves of that, a couple of bags of hamburger buns, a couple of bags of hot dog buns, and you can completely freeze those as well. Just I just toss mine in the freezer in the bags from the store. But I mean, if, if you're not gonna use it quickly, like within a month, I would recommend, you're probably gonna wanna saran wrap it and bag it up just to keep it from freezer burning or getting, sometimes it'll get kind of crumbly. Um, but anyway, then back to my menu and my list. So I know that some of the things are gonna be cheaper it sounds like. I know I needed butter for a couple of, of the recipes I was making. And so I went and looked on the Walmart app and saw, okay, butter is like $2.99 a, a pack. And then you go to Sam's and it's like $2.10 a pack, I think. But you get four at a time. So I'm going to Sam's to get my butter. Always try to price compare. If, if you're going in grocery stores, like right now, it's just easier for my family just do pickups and not even try to go in a store. But if you're going in stores completely, check out your sales papers. And when I used to go weekly, that is what I do. I'd only buy what was on sale. And I would meal plan around those things. So if, if you're going into grocery stores, definitely do that. Definitely check out the sales paper and match it up to what you're got, you have on your list. But once I do that, um, I'll think of like, things I need for the house as well. Like we need a shampoo, conditioner, laundry detergent, all those things. All that has to go into this. So I just make a separate section on my grocery list for that. And I go through the Walmart app and I put everything in and then I go to the Sam's app and put everything in. And I can check to see where we are money-wise on are we under budget, are we over budget, are we right where we need to be? And so you can go tweak more and more things if you need to. So if one meal is more expensive, maybe try to come up with another meal idea that's not quite as expensive, that can use less ingredients. And also what we're doing this month, we just started it. Um, I went over to the um, Organized Mom website and I printed out 
the 52 week food storage checklist and we are starting this because I definitely want to start building a bigger and better stockpile. Um, and so like Curliest, since I only do a grocery pickup once a month, I did week one through four. So she has on here like five cans of tuna. Um, now, when we did our budget, we budgeted $450 for the month. So once I did my whole list for Sam's and Walmart, I think it was like $400. So that gave me $50 to play with. Uh, if, if you don't have that much, you can definitely stockpile with just five to ten dollars extra but like for week one we picked up five more cans of tuna and i bought a five i think it's a five pound box or maybe a four pound box of salted sam and then like week two was five one pound bags of pasta or box macaroni and cheese so i picked those up week three were five cans of vegetables i added those to my shopping list Week four was three bags of rice. We're not really big rice eaters at our house. Me and the husband like them and my son, but our, our girls don't. So we have about three or four bags of rice already in the cabinet. I'm not going to pick up any more rice. So I jumped down to week five and I picked up five 15 ounce cans of beans. Um, so like in the week of, not in the week, but in the month of October, I'll do week six through six, six or ten i think uh october is like a five week pay period for my husband so we'll we might actually do a little more stockpiling but this is basically how i'm starting to build our stockpile more and more so that we um have plenty of food and we are prepared on we are prepared for anything that may come so basically that's it if you guys have any questions just drop them in the comments below i hopefully can explain this well to you guys. Um, I'm still new to YouTube and learning how to get my message out there, I guess. So um, it's definitely new to me. But if I left anything out or if you have any questions, please just drop them in the comments below. And also, we would really appreciate if you would like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to check out our blog, we're also on a thriftyhomestead.com. And I will also be posting blog, um, blogs on there about how we're doing on our meal planning and, and things like that as well to go along with our homesteading journey and our just, this is our journey guys. This is our journey and how we want to be prepared and financially free and build our homestead up and raise our children in a very simple way of life. And we'd love to talk and meet like-minded people like us. So just, you know, let us know you're out there and be sure to like and subscribe and thank you for watching.